What you guys will notice is that there's math all around us in this school. You don't even realize it. And that's what we've got to understand is what are you learning in class that's exactly the same thing that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Cafeteria, cold drinks, making a lot of noise. This is a proportional relationship right here, okay? If I wanna buy one water, it's gonna cost me $1.50. If I wanna buy my friend a water, it's gonna cost $1.50. If I wanna buy a third water, it's gonna cost another $1.50. It's the same thing every single time. Gatorade, dollar. Another Gatorade, another dollar. I can keep buying Gatorades as long as I have a dollar. Apple juice, $1.75. Orange juice, also $1.75. I can keep buying them as long as I have that money. It's not gonna change. The price isn't gonna change. That's the best part about it. Price isn't gonna change at all. It's a proportional relationship. That's what we gotta understand. Let's take what we've learned with the real world example of a vending machine and let's apply it to now a question that's given to us. It says the table below is going to show a relationship between the amount of candy that you can buy in pounds and the total amount of candy in dollars that you're going to spend. So if you've gone to a bulk candy section, uh, this question is kind of for you and what you're about to see. There are vocab words that go with what we're trying to find, the constant of proportionality. Constant of proportionality is what's the constant value between two proportional quantities. They're growing at a consistent rate at the same time. And so there's different words that go along with the constant of proportionality. We kind of see it with ratios, we see it with rates and unit rates, unit rates especially, and we see it with equivalent fractions. When we want to find equivalent fractions, that's what the constant of proportionality is. All right, so let's look at the question and see something that we notice. One thing that I want to point out right away is, is the x value smaller or is it larger than the y value? Once we figure that out, I see that the x value in each of these is smaller than the y value that it's associated with. When the x value is smaller than our y, we want to create it so it becomes the same size as y. So that means we're going to multiply it by something. Another thing that I notice is that the values in this table, they're not numerical order. So that kind of messes us up. And that's something that we want to do. We want to rearrange this and order it so that we have numerical order for our x values and our y values. The last thing that I kind of notice is I want to be able to count my x and y value by ones if I can. So which one of these, the x column or the y column, could I possibly count by ones to make it easier? All right, so I'm going to go into my table. My x value is going to be on the top, my y value on the bottom. I like to put down the label of what it is that we're doing. And in order to be proportional, we have to start at zero. Uh, any line, any proportional relationship, we will go through a table at the point zero, zero. So from there, what I'm going to do is I see that 10 is my biggest number for the amount of pounds that I'm going to buy of candy. So I'm going to count by ones all the way up to 10. I got a little extra room. That's good. And now I'm going to fill in what I already know. I know that five pounds of candy costs $10. I know that four pounds of candy costs eight, and six costs 12. And as I'm writing these in, 
I'm trying to find out what is the pattern that they're counting by for the y value. And I think that we can see right in here, 8, 10, 12, it looks like they're counting by twos. So if I continue that pattern of counting by twos, 14, 16, 18, 20, I can kind of fill in the rest of the table. And if I do it counting backwards, two less from eight would be six, four, two, and obviously if I'm not buying any candy, it's not gonna cost me anything. And if you took any of these fractions, three over six, six over 12, seven over 14, all of them reduced down back to our unit rate. Can we write the equation? The equation, the total is equal to, we're doing something to x in order so it becomes y. What is that something that we're doing? Well, I see it looks like that we're taking the x value and we're doubling it. If I do a couple examples like that, if I take um, the total of $6, $6 is equal to 2 times 3. And that happens to be the point that we have here that $6 is equal to 2 times 3, which is 6. 6 equals 6, so that checks out, and that's going to be correct. All right, so here's one more. And in this one, we're looking at the cost of renting a movie to the number of days that the movie is rented for. And what I noticed right away in this one is that the X value is larger than the Y value. And really what that tells me is that we're going to either divide or multiply whatever the X value is by a fraction. If we multiply something by a fraction, it's going to make it smaller than what we started with. All right, something else, the table again is out of numerical order. And I'm looking hard to see, is there a place where we can count by ones? Is it going to be easy to count by ones? I see a really big number that kind of sticks out to me here in 24. We didn't see that in the last example. I'm going to reorder my table. And X is representing days that we get to keep the movie. Y is representing dollars. And if this is going to be proportional, we are going to be able to go through the ordered pair, the origin of 0 to 0. Um, it looks like I can count by ones here because my largest is eight. So for dollars in the Y value, I'm going to start counting there all the way up to eight. Now, once I have my dollars to laid out, now I can fill in what I already know. I know that two dollars will get us six days. I know that uh, three dollars is going to get us nine days. $8 is going to get us 24 and $1 will get us three days. So you can put the label with all of them, but I'm able to see right away now that if I take the number of days and I divide it by three, I'm going to get the dollar amount that we're going to need. Or I also see that we're counting by threes, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. The way that we can write the equation, all equations are set up as y equals x. y representing the total and x representing kind of what's happening. And in order to create and make x and turn it into the y value, what do we need to do to it? So y is our total. And in order to make x, into y in this case, we have to divide it by 3. And as I said, we could use division or we can show that we are multiplying x by a fraction. That fraction will be one third. We want a third of the x. If we take 6 and we only want a third of that, we cut it into three sections and take one of those three sections, 2 is going to be that amount. If we take 15, split it into three sections and only want one of the three sections, 5 is going to be our answer for that. So being able to take any of these numbers and stick them into the equations that we have, if I want to take 5 as my y value and then say I, I want to know what a third of 15 is, well a third of 15, if I take 15, cut it into three equal sections, that's going to be 5. So this checks out. This is going to work. You can, that'll work for any of these. And that's how we know. We know we have a proportional relationship. 
every x and y value that we have will reduce down to 3 as the x value and 1 as the y value. And that's our unit rate.